You bought a brand new 3D printer from Creality and the printer is asking you to bind with Creality Cloud. But before doing that, you might consider some other alternatives than using Creality Cloud and using the Creality Print Slicer. In this video, I'm showing you one of the most open and easy to use slicers out there. Orca Slicer. So let's dive right in. Hey, Zach here and welcome to this video. You bought a brand new 3D printer from Creality and now you are looking to the screen that says bind to Creality Cloud. And you have searched online like what the hell is Creality Cloud? What should I do with this? Nowadays more and more things are being in the cloud which are basically on earth but then somewhere on a server somewhere. Take a little attention to that. It's not a joke. It's somewhere on a server here in on, on this planet. Should you do that or not? I have made a video about it, about the pros and cons of Creality Cloud. Of course, if you made, made an account on Creality Cloud, you go to the workbench and there you have the option to add a 3D printer to Creality Cloud. Which means then if you are going to use Creality Print, you can send the print job directly using Creality Cloud to your 3D printer. But then I can imagine that there are some safety concerns, some security concerns, because your files whether it's 18 plus or some other things you are printing can be maybe seen by others. I have another option. It's called Orca Slicer. Well, this seems to be a little bit more complicated. I will show you exactly how to set it up for your Creality 3D printer following these easy steps. So since I, I have been using Orca Slicer for a while, all my printers are in here. But how to add your 3D printer? I want to see which kind of printers there are. So for this in this case, I'm going to show you exactly which one. And so you have to click select or remove printers, system presets. So we click on it and we type in here the brand name of your printer. So Creality, and then you see all of the current 3D printers from Creality for Orca Slicer 2.3.0. If you are watching this in a few weeks or a few months later, check which kind of version of Orca Slicer is out there. It can be that the latest version has even more Creality printers in there. So uh, let's go over it. You can pause the screen in order to see if your 3D printer is in there as well. They even have the new Creality K2 Plus in there and the Creality High. The K2 Pro isn't in there yet, but just keep in mind that newer versions of Orca Slicer can have the K2 Pro and the K2 in there as well. Now, I already have the K1, so I will add another one. Uh, for example, if you have the Creality High, which can be very nice, 0.4 millimeter nozzle, we click on it and we click on confirm. Now. I don't have this 3D printer. I'm going to show you several of the things here because the high from Creality has also an AMS kind of system. They call it the CFS, Creality Filament System. Now, I know that this sounds a little bit weird, but uh, let's, let's go over the settings here. We click on the pencil here into the edit mode. And here we can see all the things you need to know about this 3D printer. They will send a G-code terminal. So if you have it connected through Wi-Fi or to Ethernet, then the G-code terminal will also be sent to the printer as well. So we have also the, the G-code settings. And here are all the G-code settings that the printer needs to know in order to start a print, to end a print, and do some other various things. For example, before layer change G-code, layer uh, change G-code and all other st stuff. And especially because this is a multicolor filament 3D printer, it has also changed filament G-code, which is very important to switch between different kind of colors or different kind of materials. And since we were talking about multi-material, here we have also a tab 
about multi-material you have all those settings as well i have it on advanced so that i can show during videos everything you need to know or everything you need to to see and then some some other uh, things as well so basic information we are going to click it away but of course since i don't have the creality high i cannot connect to it so i'm going to use a different kind of 3d printer so for this example for this tutorial from now on is about the creality k1 but how to know which kind of ip address you have well if you have connected your 3d printer to your wi-fi or you connect it with a LAN cable then you will see in the network tab clicking on the cog wheel or to the settings you will see under the tab network you will see the name of the network and underneath there you will see your ip address so i will type in my ip address right here test no so after so many months i can still not connect to my creality k1 using orca slicer so how to do that now well basically what you are going to do you are going to the web browser and you type in your ip address and there you enter directly the IP address from your 3D printer. This is a workaround that I always use in my videos. So you can use many different kinds of slices, but I personally, I do like to use as simple as possible slices that work out of the box perfectly with a 3D printer. And once the 3D printer is added to Orca Slicer, you don't have to think that hard in order to get some amazing print results out of your 3D printer. So how? To slice and how to send it to the 3d printer well the slicing part it's going to be uh, explained a little bit later but how to add it here on the import button i have on my desktop i've got a, a folder called creality k1 once i have sliced a model using orca slicer i send it to that folder and then in the web browser i will import the model that i just sliced in orca slicer and just import it directly through that so i will show you exactly how i will do that let's go back to orca slicer and show you some basics i only have one uh, one type of filament in there uh, i can add more but i don't have the cfs unit for the k1 so here we have the build plate from my creality k1 always make sure to have your build plate and your printer name matching always make sure that you are checking that you have selected the right 3d printer it can happen that if you are importing models from various websites like printables uh, maker world or some other of those amazing sites showing different kind of 3d models to print on your 3d printer right it can happen that you import a complete project as a 3mf file and then you suddenly have a different kind of build plate and you know you're going to run into issues well to avoid that always make sure to have here your printer selected also here making sure the normal standard build plate and so it's the it's the smooth high temp plate creality generic pla you can also select other uh, filaments as well there are some other filaments that you can add for example i have loaded a polymaker filament because polymaker has some amazing filaments so when it comes to 3d printing i always like to use polymaker and especially their new panchroma filaments they are amazing and i still don't understand why not more people are using panchroma from polymaker it's the best filament having also a lot of colors look at how beautiful that looks like my gosh i know zach i don't know where he is he he just left uh, and i thought like why not making a little advertisement of polymaker go to polymaker.com and get your panchroma or many other amazing filaments from polymaker i know this sounds a little bit sketchy but trust me if you are looking for some filaments don't look any further just head out to polymaker.com or maybe Panchroma. Oh, let's, let's head over to that. Let's, let's copy one of your amazing sports and say hi from Polyfill. So uh, let's add a PLA profile from Polymaker. Polyterra PLA. I have selected that. Confirm. So now I have here poly light pla polyterra pla so here i've got selected the right filament and now let's import a model 
So we got here a mini from Wexter. Now, of course, we already see here different kind of stuff, maybe some overhangs. Well, I usually go for some supports. You click here on adding support material, tree support, and we are going to use the organic. And then making sure on build plate only. And now we are going to slice it. So, and this is how it looks like with some tree supports in organic style, not touching this surface, but only touching the build plate. And uh, once I'm happy with this result, I see that the total print time is one hour and 42 minutes. I'm going to export the G code file. I click on it and then I'm going to make sure, and you, you can just see what happened. Creality K1 on my desktop. So I will slice it and put it here. I will call it Karen two because it was a Karen mini, just like you can see here, PLA underscore one hour and 42 minutes. So we click on save and now comes the part where, you know, if you are using Creality Print, you can send it over using Creality Print once you have binded your 3D printer to Creality Cloud. But this is not really needed. You go back to your web browser and here we click on import K1 G codes. And if you have sorted out that it is date modified you will get the latest model that you just sliced so this is my pro tip if you are using orca slicer and sending a file over to a 3d printer in this case we are sending it first to a folder but every single model that is in here where it says pla you can always print on the 3d printer so we click on open we wait for a moment i can put the lights on so and now i have sent the print over to the creality k1 it's not starting to print yet how to do that you click on there and uh, click on start printing if for some reason you made a mistake you can click on it and then delete file or maybe even rename when you want to do that and so this way you can add your Creality 3D printer to a slicer that is open source. New printers are being added every single week or every single month. I don't know how many printers they are adding every single time, but it's making it accessible for everybody to use. And well, it seems like in some ways it is a little bit more challenging, like instead of using the slicer to send the file directly over to your 3D printer, but then with a little workaround, you can still use your Creality 3D printer and print amazing stuff on your 3D printer. Have fun printing, and I will see you in the next one.